Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, the number one place for you to learn about the art and beauty of dividend investing. So today we're going to go through what are the top four dividend stocks to invest in. And I know a lot of people probably look at like Yahoo Finance or all these stats to determine what are the four best stocks. But I'm here to tell you, I'm real here. I'm not gonna give you some like BS third party source. I'm gonna look at my own portfolio and see what are the top performing stocks. And I'm going to give you an analysis whether or not I think this is a good buy for 2020. So let's take a look. So this is my M1 Finance portfolio. As you can see on the screen here, I have all these different stocks and currently it is sorted by value, but I'm going to sort it by unrealized gain. So you can see here on my top unrealized gain, this is basically my top performing stocks. So it's sorted by the best performing stock and to the least. We're going to look at the top four over here and keep in mind that even though I use my M1 Finance portfolio mainly for dividend investing, there are still some stocks that are not dividend paying. And I just put them in here because maybe they're high ticket, like they're expensive to get. And I like M1 Finance's function of buying a fraction of a share. So that's why I put them into this portfolio even though they may not be dividend paying. So let's just look at Apple. I have uh, Apple over here, current price is $267.84. By the day, it is up by $3.55, 1.34%. The dividend yield is 1.17%. Annual payout is $3.08. Payout ratio is 23.51%. And this is really good because the lower this payout ratio is, especially if it's under 70%, it means there is more potential for this stock to raise its dividends. And then the five-year growth rate is 10.84%, which is also pretty good. Dividend growth has been seven years. Last announced dividend is 77 cents. And then you can also look at the ex dividend date. So Seeking Alpha is a really good resource for you to get just everything at a glance. Of course, I also recommend you to look into their balance sheet, income statement, 10K, 10Q, uh, quarterly reports, annual reports, things like that. I also recommend you to look at those and also read MDNA, which is also something that I talked about in my stock picking strategy video. But Seeking Alpha is a great place to start and to have all these preliminary stats in one place. And then you can also see dividend growth. So you can see dividend has been consistently growing for the past seven years, and you can also see dividend history. So you can see all the different history, historical dividends, and these charts are especially helpful for dividend stocks that have been paying for like a long time. For Apple, it's kind of new, like a newbie dividend stock, but Apple, again, great products, great company, great stock to own, great growth. Uh, capital gains is pretty great for Apple. And you can see over here, Apple unrealized gain is 14%. And I got Apple not too long ago. This portfolio I built, I wanna say September, September 10th, and it's already been 14% since I first bought it. So this is definitely a good news. And then next on the list, we're going to look at Microsoft. Microsoft is also a dividend paying stock. And you can see over here, the dividend yield is 1.34%, annual payout 2.04, payout ratio 37, almost 38%, which is also under 70%, which is a good sign. Five year growth rate is 12.14%. Growth, dividend growth, 16 years. This is really good. And then amount, 51 cents. And then you can see the uh, declare date, ex dividend date, which is really important because you want to purchase the stock before this ex dividend date to get paid dividends. And then um, payout date, all these important stats. And it's quarterly, you can also see over here. And then you can also look at the dividend growth. You can see it's been growing really consistently uh, since 2004 to 2018. You can see a very consistent dividend growth. And uh, you can also look at dividend history, which you can see also very consistent in five years. And then the 10 year chart over here, very consistent dividend growth. And then of course you can also see yield on cost, which is yield on the share price. And you can also see it's a pretty consistent upward trend, which is always, always a good thing. And then let's go back to Microsoft. Microsoft, of course, it's like, <laughs> has so many products. There is your Microsoft Office, which 
which includes your Excel, includes your Word, like even there's things like Alteryx. I don't think they're a direct competitor of Microsoft. I think there will always be need of Microsoft at least in the foreseeable future. That is just my personal prediction. It has such a strong brand. And you can see for the top two, Apple and Microsoft, they both have a really, really strong brand. So this is definitely something that I want you to keep in mind. Uh, I talk about branding and my stock picking strategy, especially for B2B businesses. Branding is so important because you can't really prevent market volatility. The market's gonna be volatile. That's given. That's just the nature of the market. That's just the nature of investments. But then, Branding is what is going to break through in a volatile market uh, in bad news. The brand recognition is what's going to help with the situation. So Apple and Microsoft, both really large brand names, super strong and very loyal customers too. Once you go Apple, you can't really go back. And also with Microsoft, a lot of people love Microsoft, like Microsoft Surface, Microsoft even phone, like all these products a lot of people love. So these are all key considerations to make not just like in terms of numbers, but also just analyzing the business in general. And next up we have Broadcom. I also open up Broadcom over here and you can see the current price is $318.44. Pretty expensive to get. So if you were to invest in this, I would say open up M1 Finance, open up your M1 Finance portfolio and you can buy a fraction of the share. You can spend 10 bucks on Broadcom and just uh, invest more money into your portfolio as you have more money coming in. This is a great way to at least get your foot in the door and uh, follow the upward trend. And then you can see over here, there is dividend yield 3.35%, annual payout $10.60, payout ratio 49.8%, which is also good under 70%, and then five-year growth rate 55%, and then dividend growth is eight years. And then last announced dividend $2.65, really good. Uh, their ex dividend date is September 20th and then they also pay quarterly and then you can see over here there is the uh, yield on cost also take a look at yield on cost and it's been consistently going higher and higher which is a good thing look at dividend growth also consistently growing higher and higher and it's been consistent for eight years and then dividend history also very consistent going up Look at the 10-year chart, also consistently going up. Been paying dividends since 2011. So Broadcom may not be as well known. They make software, they make semiconductor, and if you want to know a company more, Google is your friend. Of course, you can also look at Seeking Alpha and just go to the company website. Go to their investor relations website and take a deep look at their financial statements. Their 10K, which is their annual report. Their 10Q, which is their quarterly report report and sometimes they have AQs. If there are major events or major changes, they're also going to disclose that into their 8K report. So 8K report captures all the major changes such as changes in the C-suite, such as like, you know, firing a CFO or something major like that. And then next we are going to go back to our list. There is Tesla, which is not dividend paying, so I'm not really going to talk about that even though it does have unrealized gain of 7.81%, which is very impressive. There's also VIG, which is an ETF, which is technically not a stock. It's an ETF, which tracks a certain index. Also not gonna talk about that because it's not actually a stock. So we're going to look at Target. So Target, 14.34% growth, which is pretty amazing. So Target, yield on cost is pretty consistent. I wouldn't say it's like going up or down. It's just been pretty consistent. Uh, hovering over the 3, 3%, 4% mark. And then dividend growth, it's also been growing pretty consistently for the past 51 years. So this is definitely something that you should keep in mind. It's been consistently growing its dividends. And then you can see the dividend history, also pretty consistent. There is like a slight dip over here and then also dip over here, but overall pretty consistent, still upward trending. And let's take a look at the summary. So this is the summary of the stock price uh, in one year. It grows dramatically, and with Black Friday sales and the Christmas sales, I'm pretty sure it's just going to be even better. Look at the five-year chart. There's a dip over here in 2017, but 2018 also dip around year end over here and then going up. But the dividend growth is really awesome on this one. It looks like the stock price is not that consistent. So keep that in mind. 
market cap oh i forgot to talk about market cap but if you look back on all the different stocks that are my top performers they are all large cap so over here you can see apple has the market cap of 1.17 trillion so any market cap above a billion like above 10 billion that is large market cap so apple is definitely a large market cap and then you can see microsoft is also 1.16 trillion also large market cap and then broadcom also large cap it is 125 billion so larger than 10 billion large cap and then uh, tarjay 64 billion also large cap so all these are large cap companies i tend to invest in large cap companies because they're kind of like proven concepts to me and i don't really like taking risks on penny stocks or anything that's not yet established maybe i'll put some play money fund money into those investments but i'll never focus my investments on not yet established up and coming companies and stocks. Back to Target. Target dividend rate $2.64 and then an EPS 6.4. Overall, I want to say out of these four stocks, Target is the only one that I'm kind of iffy about because it does have pretty volatile uh, prices. But then if you're focused on dividends, of course, Target is a really great dividend paying stock. Just take a look at their dividend. Dividend yield 2.1. 1% payout ratio 41% pretty good dividend growth has been 51 years which is super good and it is also quarterly pay so if you're more focused on the dividend aspect definitely consider target but if you're also concerned with capital gains or losses target might not be a very good choice for you because it is relatively volatile in terms of stock price so let me know your thoughts about these four stocks what are your thoughts and what are your top four performing dividend stocks let me know in the comments i read every single one of them also merch buy my merch in my info box also i have a ton of free stock links be sure to check that out two free stocks from weeble plus one coffee gift card and then for robin hood you get one free stock and m1 finance just love and support for my channel and then smash the like button smash that subscribe button bell button you know the drill and i will see you in my next investing video